Welcome back. Here's Abe. And here's uh, Alessandro. And we are going to take a look uh, this time uh, open R and R shade mm -hmm. styles and how to uh, customize shade yeah. style. I Instead of using existing ones, we're going exactly. to write our own. Exactly. We start with a very, very, very simple example, yeah. and it's basically a shade style that just uh, gives a plain color. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, I'm going to copy. Well, here you can see the syntax. Mm -hmm. Or we can type it. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. let's, let's type let's it. Type let's it. Type it yeah. um, drawer mm -hmm. shade style. So you remember? I mean, if you look at the uh, previous episode, uh, one has to attach a shade style object, basically, to draw drawer dot uh, shade style, and the shade style with the curly bracket is a shade style builder, mm -hmm. right? So inside here, to build a shade style, you have to pass at minimum something that is called the frag fragment transform mm -hmm. that will tell how the fragment, which, I mean, think about them as pixels. It's not correct because a fragment is a bit more than a pixel, but le let's take it, think it <laughs> as a pixel. And this thing transforms the pixels. Yeah. Okay? So this is, now I remember one of the, cool things that uh, attracted me to open R&DR mm -hmm. at the beginning, like to think, wow, I can just inline a shader code on the exactly. middle of the program. This is very, very somehow, I just say, comfortable, because in other frameworks, you have to create an extra file, and then you have to load it. You have a little bit of boilerplate, which sometimes may uh, slow you down while mm. you experiment. Yeah. You think, ah, should I use a shader? And you're like, ah, oh, no, I have to write an extra file, then I have to load it, yeah. then I have to, so. And, okay. and if you're writing 10 shader files, then that's good. Mm. It's fine to have external files. Yes, But exactly. sometimes you just want to do a tiny adjustment or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. And, and also to prototype and see if it looks good or not. Yeah. Because not everything looks good when, you know, done with shaders. But the interesting thing is that this is kind of uh, an, um, sort of, uh, an, an in sort of an internal language to open render that allows you to, s to set up some particular aspects of the of the shading process, the shading backend that is behind. Mm -hmm. For instance, in this case, we are writing on something that is called X uh, uh, underscore fill, and it's basically the fill property of the the object that we are going to draw through, mm -hmm. right? Mm. So, yeah, um, let me say that inside this shade style, normally you will write a a fragment transform, mm -hmm. sometimes a vertex transform, mm -hmm. but we're going to look into that. We will not look today mm -hmm. into that. And the purpose of the, f the main purpose of the fragment transform is going to be either to change the color of the fill, the fill color, or, or, the, stroke. or the stroke color. Exactly. And notice that, I mean, if you have uh, never seen this notation, you can see dot RGB. Mm -hmm. So this is a three-dimensional, it's a way in GLSL to basically obtain uh, a, a three-dimensional vector mm -hmm. from a possible four-dimensional one. Indeed, X fill, fill is also another component, yeah. which is the alpha. Yeah. And to, we are basically now overwriting this uh, fill property with a vector that, um, yeah, exactly. With a vector that um, it's a three-dimensional vector, mm. and the components go from zero to one. Yeah. They are normalized RGB uh, mm -hmm. components. Okay. Maybe just for fun mm -hmm. uh, to show that you could write this in three lines. Yes. Uh, yes, of course. Is more is longer. Mm -hmm. But basically, here I'm overriding the red, the green, and blue components mm -hmm. by one point zero, mm -hmm. which is the full the maximum value. Mm -hmm. So you can see that then it ignores, even if I say that I want green or yellow. Mm -hmm. It overrides the, this. Yeah. But one thing I could do, which is kind of interesting, is I could multiply by 0 0.5, for, exa for mm -hmm. example. And this is making, respecting the original colors, the green and the yellow, mm -hmm. but making them darker. Right. Notice how the order of uh, drawing is preserved. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that the ye the one which the ye with the yellow color is called after mm -hmm. has the effect of appearing closer to us. Yeah. Right? This this mm -hmm. line here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. So how 
let's see now. This is the very, very super, super hyper basic, <laughs> uh, how to say, um, uh, introduction to the fragment transform. Mm -hmm. I think the next step is to show how we, we can pass external parameters to mm -hmm. this fragment tra transform. Okay. Uh -huh. For example, time? Time, for example, time, for example, time. We could make this color, for example, go mm -hmm. uh, wobble between zero and one mm -hmm. with time. Mm -hmm. So then we would use uh, like a sine wave, mm -hmm. sine. And now this here we are in GLSL world. Yeah. So that's why we don't need here an import mm -hmm. uh, for this mm -hmm. sin, sine call. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to have something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to multiply the requested color, the color we passed in, mm -hmm. by a number that's mm -hmm. going to oscillate between 0 and 1. Right, right. So and I've been using over render for long enough to say, oh, you're not going to get a simple <laughs> a variable call like this. You can, <laughs> but the point, I mean, the, my somehow yeah. brain process <laughs> is because you have to pass parameters, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's in um, in many other frameworks, almost I have the feeling that almost every framework calls parameters the way they want. <laughs> Sometimes they do prefix them with mm. some, uh, I don't know, like in this case with some letters. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. So the substance is the same, but you know the form is a bit different. But mm. how do we pass now? We want to pass time. Okay. How do we pass parameters? So was it here? Parameter. Yeah, it's, it's there. Uh, time. And for example, seconds. Perfect. Um, so now to access this variable in mm -hmm. the fragment transform, mm -hmm. you have to use the same name of the variable, but prefix them with P, P underscore. P for parameter. Exactly. And now? And now you can see that you, we, are passing the, we are passing the time. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Um, all right. So... This, I, want, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to point out one thing. R notice that we have this inside the extend block, mm -hmm. and you would might wonder, oh, is this recreating the shade style on every case? And mm -hmm. I think it's somehow caching the mm -hmm. shade style. Mm -hmm. um, but there's another way of writing it, which would be we could have it out outside here. Mm -hmm. um, we could call it whatever effect, mm -hmm. uh, and that would be our shade style. Uh, like mm -hmm. these. So we would have the effect, then we just apply here the effect, um, and finally we have to... Pass the parameter. Effect dot... Was it effect? Ah, dot parameter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would be like this. Mm -hmm. And this is extra. And this would work. Yeah. I have to... Be all, I never do this. No? No, I always write my shade style in line. In line. I yeah. don't know. I find it like very... Also because when I read, I know exactly where they are going to be mm -hmm, applied. Mm -hmm. So I always write them in yeah. line. I don't know why. I, I always think, oh, I should first define the shader. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. I mean, I mean it, it makes it makes a complete sense. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, it's, it's not something that I do. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. Maybe because, you know, it, it comes on my mind to... Just okay. Let's write it in line, and it's yeah. it's the you know like mm -hmm. very spontaneous and yeah. uh, an organized way of doing it. Okay, so now we have we are just 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 scratching the surface. Okay, yeah. so now how do for instance we have this X fill right, mm -hmm. and we have been telling oh this uh, overrides the the fill. Okay, mm -hmm. an X stroke overrides the 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 mm -hmm. stroke of the curve, yeah. but how do we know about this? Uh, right. So the place where you're going to spend a lot of time if... Well, first... <laughs> sometimes too much time. <laughs> first, you should probably learn about GLSL. Yeah. Which you can take a look at the book of shaders. You can take is, a look at the book of shaders. Uh, yes, exactly. I exactly. also like... I often look at this... Yeah, Shaderific yeah. is unrelated, but yeah. I like this list of... We will also have a small episode just about... GLSL, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, GLSL takes time to digest mm. a lot of, and it, it can be frustrating. So once you have some idea about GLSL, yeah. then in this page, there's a list of all the uniforms you can use. Exactly. Like, and yeah, here's an explanation of mm -hmm. the. Basically, these are like some 
how do you call that? Some rules they use yeah, for yeah. naming the variables. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, X is for transformable variables. Mm -hmm. P, ah, you see, it's not parameter, it's provided value. Uh -huh. That's <laughs> <laughs> it's there yeah. are some, some of them which are not here, like how to pass a buffer. Yeah. Well, I wonder if it's both because yeah. you're actually calling yeah. parameters. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, to me, it makes yeah. uh, sense yeah. semantically, but, mm -hmm. you know, the guide is well, the guide. So, well, this, this list here for the prefixes, mm -hmm. then there are standard uniforms. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that you, if you have to choose and concentrate, concentrate on uniforms about the fragment yeah. aspect, which are the one that are, yeah, in fragment transform, so fill and stroke. Yeah, I think... You can almost ignore the whole list. Yes. You can just change the fill color. Yeah. And maybe you want to know the position. Yes. And this we, for this, you have other variables lower that start with C. Yes, these are very important. Uh -huh. Like the screen position, the contour position, and the bounce position. Should we just use the screen position to make like a gradient? Uh, yes, yes, yes. It's just yes. To and we throw can, in... we, yeah, we can show a trick also uh -huh. because the screen position is unnormalized. Mm -hmm. So at least the trick that I use, I pass the resolution. Okay. And then, you know, I normalize it. Uh, um, you you could say, why don't you use C bounce position? Yeah, <laughs> yeah because C bounce position, uh, basically normalizing accords, according to the bounce. The... And sometimes you might want, for some reason, to have a bounce at the screen separated. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. Mean, bounce position is yeah good. Bounce it's, position is already normalized. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So what would happen if we said this is? Why don't we define a variable? Something so. like that. Ah, okay. <laughs> I thought it was a quick. Okay, that, that's very quick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just take the red and the green components. Yeah. And uh, make them equal to the bounce position, which is normalized. So what does it mean that it's normalized? It's it goes from 0 to 1. 0 to 1, so the top left position on mm -hmm. this circle. Mm -hmm. Not inside the circle, but actually the yeah, bounding exactly, exactly. square yeah. that will be 0, 0, yeah, yeah. and the bottom right will yeah. be But OK, one, so one. why don't we do another very quick thing, and then we basically mm -hmm. we can wrap it up and yeah. have a proper introduction to GLSL. Mm -hmm. Let's, it depend on the distance. Let, let's do SQRT. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. I would say of the C bound position x y minus zero dot five, right? Um, Does it work? R G. Well, I could say R G B to R G B. Put all the colors, uh, uh, but there's also a distance. Do you do, do you use length, distance? Length, length, but yes. also distance. Ah, distance also. You don't use? No. <gasps> My computer. Oh, was kind of sleepy. Okay. <laughs> Scary. Uh, distance between uh, this x, y, and back to 0, 5. Okay. And a uh, missing bracket. bracket. And then... Let's see. I mean, the point is that now distance would... Uh, ah, it's an integer. It's half float. Ah. So we need... Uh, to specify right 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 let me i have ah, to move the window right. yes yeah very nice you can see that now that there is sort of a shading towards the center mm. and the center is a bit uh, darker i'll split into lines mm -hmm. so and then if i make i don't know d square mm -hmm. Or, or one over D. One yeah. also. Or, yes. Yeah. There's many options. <laughs> yeah, there are many, many options. <laughs> and basically, all of these tricks, you learn it. This is too much, probably 0.00, .00 uh, yeah, or stuff like this. Uh, all of these tricks, you, you learn them by practice, basically. Yeah. There are some things you can, you know, study, but most of it is just like, yeah, like use the use of power. Like you just spend time and uh, practice them, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we can uh, end up this video here I yep. mean, with a very quick introduction to custom made um, uh, fragment transform, yep. and we can have another episode on GLSL. Yeah, uh, hopefully, we'll see you there. <laughs> take care, bye bye, bye take care, bye bye.